Yesterday, this chicken tractor, duck tractor, chuck tractor, was full of duck. But we processed them all but three. I decided to keep three here. And I'm gonna let them out, let them range in here with these chickens. Quack, quack. There you go, there you go. Oh, got a chicken in here too. So I saved three of the ducks out of the flock because I wanna have the ability to reproduce them on our own. We get most of our birds from Murray McMurray Hatchery, which I love, by the way. However, I wanna be able, if there's an event come where they're not able to ship or they, uh, I don't know, the Postal Service or whoever shuts down or some reason they stop the hatcheries from producing, I wanna be able to have, be sustainable to the point where, hey, and I want to grow in this, we can produce more and more on our own. So I tried to save one male and two females. I think that I've done that. And I can tell usually by the way that their tails are on ducks. With ducks, the male's tail feathers will kind of curl up at the back and the females will kind of point down a little bit more. So I think the two right here are female and the one right there is a male so i hope that's the case but we'll just have to wait and see in the meantime they're hanging out here with these broilers as they are getting ready to be processed so soon those three ducks will be uh alone but we'll probably move them with the other ducks that we have slowly integrate them with them and then isolate them when we're ready to breed them uh to reproduce but uh we can go ahead and Move this chicken tractor out now. Well, this chuck tractor that the ducks are in because uh, there's enough room in this area now for these. And besides, I need a bigger tractor for our layers on the other side of the garden. So let's get this out of here. Alrighty, I think that'll be good right here. So we'll transfer the layers, the small layers that I have right over there into this tractor right here, which will give them more room and it's easy, a lot easier to move than old clunky over there. And then as they're here and we'll move them each day. So gradually, as we'll start ripping out this old okra here, they'll start scratching, eating this grass, cleaning it up for us and add manure in here. It'll make it even more suitable to grow things this coming spring. Good morning. Guys ready to be moved? Actually, you know what? I'm sure one of the kids would want to help out with this. So, uh, let's go get somebody to help out. Alright. Good morning. Good morning. Definitely a lot warmer in here. Can camera's kind of condensating right here. <laughs> Wipe it off. <laughs> well, would anybody be willing to help me move a couple of these layers or move the layers into the new chicken tractor that the ducks are in? I will. All right. Just one volunteer. You too, Micah. Now come on. Taylor's got just a little bit more energy than I have this morning. <laughs> Hopefully that energy can go to when it's time to work too, right? Yep. <laughs> That's not always the case, but hope so.
All right, you wanna grab them or you want me to grab them? I'll grab them. All right. Let's take this batch and then we'll come back and get a few more. All right, let me grab it. I love these crates, man. They come in handy in so many ways. We've gotten these crates and our plucker from Strom Stromberg's. And uh, I'll leave the information in the show notes below, but this has come in handy in so many different ways here on the homestead since we've been raising these birds and I've gotten these crates. So I mentioned earlier about us processing ducks yesterday and we processed a little under 20. And as we've been processing more and more animals here on our homestead, one of the things that we're trying to iron out and figure out is what to do with what's remaining of them, their remains, their innards, the blood, and all that. Well, we took the blood, put it into the compost, because why, why go buying blood meal when you could just use it from the animals and use it to make better quality compost? So we're doing that, as well as the feathers. Feathers went into the compost as well. Last time when I processed the broilers, I thought that the chickens would help me spread out the feathers into the compost, but they ate the feathers. So I decided not to put them in with the chickens this time to put them straight into the compost and we'll just let them gradually break down within the compost. Uh, the number of things like the organs, we, we're saving them for us to eat. We're trying to do more of that in our diet because there's so many health benefits to that. However, there's things like the intestines, the stomach, and things like that. Really not sure what to do with them. Uh, last time when I processed the Cornish crosses, I tried to give them to our dogs because I've heard that there's so many benefits to, to providing that, that raw meat and, and those things to, to your dogs as far as providing things like probiotics and so many other nutrients that are just so much better for them than dog food. However, dog didn't want to eat them. So this time I'm thinking, what if I cook them and give it to the dogs where they eat them then? And then if they don't, at least it's cooked and then I can maybe try giving them to the chickens because they, they eat all kind of different things. Uh, because you do want to make sure that you take care of them. I've tried burying things like that in the past, but come to find out they, they got dug up by other predators. So why waste the energy of, of digging it when something's going to just dig it right out of the ground again? So I think we're just going to try cooking them here and then seeing if the dogs will eat them and if the dogs don't maybe the chickens will. What does that see? Alright so we got some water heated up here boiling and we're just going to put this right in here all the stuff that you don't want to see on there. So I'm just going to pour it in. Add a little bit more water in so things won't start to burn. Should be good. And I think we'll just cover it with the lid so that way it'll pull everything. Alrighty, so as this is cooking right here, Mike and I are gonna head over here and continue working on the project that I started last week. And that is setting up a greenhouse over here where our layers are to set up an overwinterized system for them 
so that way they can have an area for them to be in protected from the cold not that they need a lot of protection here where we live but it will also make their area more suitable for fertilizing this area so that way we can grow better food here hopefully i plan to grow some really good tomatoes and cucumbers here so hopefully they can really add some nice fertilization to this area right here so just the other day i poured concrete put these posts in one on this side one over there for our hoops to insert into so we can start working on our greenhouse and since we're parking them in this area for an extended period of time we need to make sure that the area stays sanitary by adding mulch whether it be wood chips or leaf compost things like that so that way they can scratch around and their manure they're not just constantly walking in it but they can spread out the the organic matter around so that way it just makes the area sanitized and more healthier for them so uh let's get started because right now it's pretty low uh you can see some of the manure on top so micah what we're gonna do buddy is we're gonna get some of the leaf compost from right up here in our pile bring it on down here and start spreading it out for them you ready I'm ready I don't, um, um. watch out just walk over there we added the leaf compost on here leaf mulch and uh, I think I'm gonna ultimately do a couple layers of it just because it will break down easier and blend in with the manure and then after we do a couple layers of the leaf compost then we will add some wood chips on top of that so we'll go from there so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my first hoop up install it here but before I do that I actually need to go check on our duck innards and uh, see how it's looking over there. Yummy. Not really, but not terrible. It's cooking. I think we're pretty much at a good stopping point. We're just cooking it. It's not for us. <laughs> how are some people eating intestines? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but uh, I think we're good to cut it off and just kind of let the heat cool down on them and then we'll try to serve them up. So as I'm waiting for that to cool off, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the hoop that I was talking about. I'm actually decided to move our old caterpillar tunnel that we had in the main market garden just because with the way the property is sloped it's really hard to work with it work in it with it set up the way it is so up here where we're setting this up for the overwinterized chickens and ducks is a lot flatter so it'll be a lot more suitable for that area so i'm going to disassemble start disassembling this one move that first hoop up to the top to where I set up those posts. So I have a pretty good ways to go with setting our hoops up here. I still need to buy a couple more things to kind of get it the way I want it. I want to lift it up higher than it was down there. So I'm gonna to need to make some modifications on getting some posts, poles and cutting them. And anyways, we'll come back to it another day. But we're gonna go ahead and feed, go ahead and feed the duck innards. We're gonna try, see how the dogs like them as well as how the chickens like them. So, uh, just gonna see how it goes. Duck innards time. Are you ready for that, Sailor? No. <laughs> no really. I didn't think so. All righty. Dog number one. Come here, Coco. Come on. See if you like it. Come on right here. Yummy. See if you like it. Ooh. We have a taker. Did you think she was gonna eat it? Yeah. You did? How did you know that? Mm. You just know her that well? Yeah. 
You do take care of them, so I guess you probably know them best. But <laughs> she's tearing it up. Good girl, Coco. Yep. Good girl. You hear me? Hey, don't lick the camera now. <laughs> I was just gonna lick the camera. <laughs> I'm actually really glad she likes it. I really would like to get them on a more raw food diet and less off commercial feed. Uh, there's just so many more benefits to them eating eating food like this. Real food. And there's actually a company that I saw online actually packages, I think, chicken innards to sell for dogs and I think cats too. So uh, I'm not, uh, hey, I'm not packaging any of this up and making it for sale. But uh, each time we do the processing now, I think uh, we're going to keep trying this out and put it to use. Go, go. Did you get all you needed? You get all you needed there? There you go. All right. I guess we're trying the next dog. Nope. Oh, she still wants some more. Like, that's some good stuff here. <laughs> Look at them. They're like going crazy. It's like, whoa. Uh, Even though I didn't have any human takers for my duck entered stew, uh, all the buddy? meat eating animals mm -hmm. on our homestead absolutely loved it. Yummy. Come here. So, this looks like yummy. something we will continue to implement here to ensure that when we process our animals, that we'll use everything from nose to tail, inside and out.